Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I had a few questions from some viewers regarding my wire stripper as well as some older household wires. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about both of those and actually kill two birds with one stone using my wire stripper to actually cut through some of this older house wire. So the first question, thank you very much Chad. Uh, this is a Stripmeister. This is just a basic model that I got online from stripmeister.ca. Currently, right now in Canada, it's going for $229 Canadian. And the nice thing about this is it has saved me lots of time and effort. I have done spools or thousands of dollars worth of uh, copper, so it's definitely made its money back. And just the way this works, this is, as I said, a uh, basic model. It's a drill powered model. The drill just connects to this uh, notch here. It spins the, um, the wheels there, feeds the wire through, and as you can see, there is my cutting blade. Uh, the nice thing about this cutting blade is when I bought this, it does come with a replacement blade. Uh, as I said, I've done spools of wire and I have yet to have to change this blade so it goes a long way. Uh, so that's great. It's still sharp and still cuts through no problem. Um, you've got the top um, nozzle here or the lever here that uh, brings up and down the cutting blade. This nozzle brings the cutting deck up and down and as you can see, there are different holes depending on the thickness of your wire. Um, so that does make the job a little bit easier that it can feed through there uh, and guide it. There are a few drawbacks with this um, that I will address in a second. Um, but if you are one of the types that is thinking about getting a wire stripper, it all depends on the wire that you have and the quantity. Luckily for me, I live in an area that is uh, heavy construction in the near area. As well, some people that are renoing their house. So I do have some older wire from those rental projects as well as new wire that the electricians continue to throw into the dumpsters and I continue to collect, so that's great for me. Um, but again, $229, in my opinion, because of the amount of wire I had, was a great investment. I have made a couple thousand dollars easy upgrading my wire. One of the drawbacks with this blade or this Stripmeister model is that I cannot strip really thin wire. So Cat5, Cat6 wire, which is your internet cables that um, is usually a blue or a, a gray, it will cut the outer coating off of the wire. However, the really fine copper wires inside, this cutting deck will not when blade will not reach that wire, so I have to do it, um, if I'm going to do it, I have to do it by hand. So that is the only drawback. There are some models that will do every thickness or gauge of wire, um, but again, this one, that is one of the drawbacks to that, um, that I have. Uh, but in my opinion, there are some wires that are actually not worth your time stripping all the way down to the copper. You are going to lose uh, money from the coating uh, that adds to the weight and those types of wires could go into your 40% uh, copper recovery or 60% copper recovery. And if you're interested in figuring out what wires to strip and which ones are not, I do have videos explaining that. So if you're interested, go check that out. But again, Chad, this Stripmeister, definitely recommend it. It's $229 Canadian. Um, but again, it is entirely up to you on your quantity of wire and the thickness of it, but given the price right now of Bear Bright and number one copper at almost $5 Canadian, it definitely pays for itself very quickly, especially if you look at just this pile right here, I'm probably going to have about 15 pounds stripped once I'm done, um, which will almost cover the cost. So this probably 15 to 20 pounds will cover the cost almost of this machine. So. Um, great question. As I said, I love this machine, Stripmeister. Um, you can find cheaper models online that are hand cranked or that, um, and as well, Stripmeister does have bigger ones that are for tougher jobs that actually have a motor so you don't have to drill power. Um, but uh, definitely recommend it if you have a lot of wire. 
The second question was asking about older copper wire that has the thick fabric mesh on the outside. And for those of you that are new to scrapping, if I was to take some modern wire that you will find in your house, this is your common Romex wire. This wire right here has a nice, all three have a nice plastic outer coating. This is the stuff that you will see wired to your outlets. Some of the reds or oranges, the thicker stuff goes to bigger electronics or bigger appliances. So this one is thicker gauged. You'll have some that go to your dryer. Um, this one will probably go to your, um, uh, your stove because it's thicker gauged. And the nice thing about this, as I said, is it does have a plastic outer coating as well inside. Some of them are three or four strands. Sometimes you'll have a clean piece of copper wire in there. Some you'll have individual um, coated wire as well. So this is your modern Romex and wire that you will have um, coming out of your house. Uh, I want to say this is um, NMD. Uh, this is, um, as I said, this is going to your, um, your dryer. The stuff that was put in in the 70s, the 80s and beyond is called NMD wire. And I'm gonna just show you a couple of examples. This is your old type of Romex wire. Some of them are red, some of them are blue or uh, brown. And same thing inside, if I take it up to the camera, you can see there are three strands inside as well. Uh, one that is clean, two that are coated. But the difference is it has, I've already frayed this for you, some paper around the wires. As well, the coating is not plastic, it's more of a uh, mesh. And this stuff, as I said, is I got from a gentleman down the street who was doing a, a house renovation, um, and definitely as well comes in different gauges. Uh, but the neat thing about this, even though this stuff was put in in the 70s, it, once stripped, reveals some beautiful bare bright copper. And in my opinion, really worth your time stripping it. Um, if I was to bring this in as is, this would be classified as your 40% copper recovery uh, because it has an outer coating of um, coating as well as inside there are two strands that have additional coating. And what a scrapyard looks at is copper recovery and plastic or coating to copper ratio. Because there is more plastic or coating, less copper, it's gonna go for 40% copper recovery, which is still right now going for $1.23 a pound Canadian, which is great. So I could bring this in as is. Uh, and it is heavy, it does add up. If I was to take off the outer coating, which I'm going to do for this video, um, I will have one clean strand of copper, which will give me uh, number one copper or bare bright, depending on how clean it is. As well, the two individual strands, once I remove the outer coating, if I don't wanna to touch those, then I will have more copper, less plastic recovery, and that would upgrade those two individual wires to 60% copper recovery, which is currently going for $2.03 a pound, which is even better. But because I have a stripper and I uh, maximize my profit as much as I can, once I strip the entire thing, this will all go into my number one or bare bright copper, which is currently going for number one copper, uh, $4.68 a pound, and bare bright, which is $4.89 a pound, which is a great price right now too. So um, here we go, I'm gonna show a couple. One drawback about this stuff is when I start stripping it, it, it is kind of messy. It does turn my hands a little bit black. There is almost like a, uh, a soot on here. It's not, but it's like a, a residue that comes off of the mesh. Um, so if you are doing this, you do want to make sure that you are in your garage or somewhere that you're not going to create too much of a mess. Uh, I am just going to set up my drill right now for you. Um, that way, as I said, I can show Chad how easy it works. As well, I can show my other viewer how nice it is to strip this wire. And for, for this video as well, if you do not have a wire stripper, I am going to actually cut some by hand as well, um, just to show you a different method. It is easy to cut through. Um, obviously, it's 
slower than a wire stripper, but it can be done. Um, and what I am going to do is when I do these videos or when I do any types of stripping, I do make sure I put safety glasses on. Uh, any chance of potential injury is definitely something I don't want. Um, but again, I'm just going to set up my drill here. And now we just set up in there. Sorry, I had to set it. And I do have to put a book on here to adjust the height. Um, I did it just uh, to modify this a little bit, just so it's uh, a little bit higher, and I don't actually have to hold this um, the drill. It's just it's level on there. Um, I have already uh, put the cutting deck at the right height. That is one thing I, that um, when you're starting out cutting your wire, one um, tip that I will tell you is what you want to do is make sure that you have all of your same gauge wire in a, in a stack because once you set the cutting deck to the right height, um, the best thing, the easiest thing is to do all of that wire at the same time. It saves time and effort trying to adjust your cutting deck. Um, so before the video, I have already set my cutting deck for this wire. This is going to definitely be something from your dryer. It, uh, it is thicker than your household, but I am going to show both examples. I am going to bring it up to the camera a little bit. So I also put my safety glasses on. I'm going to feed this through. Make sure I set my cutting, my blade. is thicker. The problem is, is because it's so bendy, it is hard to get through. But as you can see, it is feeding through slowly. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've taken off the outer coating. This is just a fib fabric mesh. Okay, it's almost like a thick snake skin. Um, it does crumble in my hand. And I might not have gotten the whole thing, and it depends on the wire. Sometimes they do twist, and that's okay. Uh, and it also, because this is so old, it is also a little brittle. But what I also do is, if I didn't finish all the way through, I just actually just take a knife and finish the cut. There is, like I said, it, depending on if the blade or if the, um, the wire turns. Okay, so... There is the wire. There is the outer coating. And again, as you can see, once I unravel the paper, this paper, depending on your gauge, depending on the house or the time this was put in, this is going to be four stranded. Three are coated. I'm just going to try to unwind that for you a little bit. But as you can see inside here, I do have one number. This would be number one wire. I have three insulated wires here um, that I will take out as well. And the nice thing about this stuff is you can obviously strip the rest of this. The paper is going to go into the garbage. Um, but when we talk about gauges and wire, um, when we talk about bare bright, bare bright, it all depends on the thickness of your wire. In order to classify as bare bright, the wire has to be thicker than 16 gauge, which is the thickness of the lead of a pencil. This wire here is thicker than the lead of a pencil, so this is going to go into either my number one or my bare bright. But because this is tarnished, this is going to be number one. Something like this, here is your bare bright, that's that shiny penny look. This is thicker than 16 gauge. It's going to go into bare bright, so the highest value. As well, as I'm on the topic of bare bright, um, unfortunately, piping and tubing does not classify as bare bright. Bare bright only pertains to wire. So that's something that uh, some people uh, need to, or you need to be clarified on, or 
um, told. Now, this wire, this is your household Romex that I'm gonna deal with. The nice thing about this, what I found is, this has a side portal that I'm gonna use. And obviously I have to change my cutting deck to get to it. So I'm just gonna move my deck a little bit and change my blade again. This might take a couple passes to get through, but this will be easier because it's not as uh, bent. All right, so just feed it through. And as you can see, one pass, there is a groove down here, but I did not go far enough down with the cutting blade. So I just put it back through. There we go. So again, there is the outer coating snakeskin coming off. It's like a paperish, as you can see, the black inside. Really nice piece of, this would be probably, this would be bare number one copper. Um, I don't think it's gonna be bare bright because there is some tarnish on it. But it does have, again, inside, here is another individual coated strand. It's gonna take the paper off, so this paper is garbage. Now I have two wires that are in its own casing. So again, if I brought this in as is, this would be your 60% copper recovery. But I'm gonna go one step further again and make this number one copper or bare bright, depending on when I look at it. I'm just gonna feed it through now. Peel off this skin and look at that, as you can see, beautiful, bare, bright. Okay, so thicker than 16 gauge, beautiful color. So the highest value copper right there. Um, and if I turn this camera down a little bit, actually you can see inside, if I turn this, I've just done a little bit, but this is the yucky garbage that I was talking about. So you definitely wanna make sure you're doing it outside. Now, again, if you do not have a wire stripper, uh, easy thing to do. I'm just gonna take another piece of Romex right here. And all I do is I use an, a utility knife to break this open. Uh, again, I'm just gonna do it on this bench, but I do set it up on a different bench. But just taking a utility knife, I do wanna make sure I have um, gloves as well as safety glasses when I actually do this, but I'm just gonna do a small example for you. And it's very easy to set. It's very, it's paperish. Just do a quick pass down. As you can see, peels it right off. Okay, there's my garbage. I have one clean strand and I have two coated strands that I have right here. Okay, to maximize my profit, I'm definitely gonna strip this, but as is, I just upgraded from $1.23 to a dollar or $2.03 and $4.68 for this. Okay, so uh, again, this is your fiber mesh NMD wire put in in the 70s, the 80s. Um, if it's thicker, same thing. As I said, I have, this is my stove. I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but I can put this through my wire stripper, which is great. But if I couldn't, if I don't have a wire stripper, it is very easy to cut through as well. As you can see, there it is. Okay, so thank you very much for those questions. Keep them coming. Love to answer questions if I can help out fellow scrappers. Love taking the advice too. So again, please comment down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Tin Man out.